Hey Gender Queer Chat, it's Tuesday and this is Matt and um, I just want to apologise, I didn't post a video last week, very sorry. I just got caught up doing things and didn't end up posting and that's a terrible excuse and I am very sorry and it won't happen again, I promise. Please forgive me. Um, I also just want to say thank you to everyone who uh, watched and posted comments and um, liked my last video that I did a couple of weeks ago um, in Gender Queer and Dating. I really enjoyed making that video, especially since I was able to bring um, Lexi uh, in on it and yeah we had a lot of fun and it was really good to hear some of the comments that people um, put up that was really nice and I loved it thank you very much for that so this week's topic um, was suggested by Keenan and it's a really good one and it is who are your favorite gender related and or trans or genderqueer authors musicians or artists um, it kind of ties in with some of the questions that I didn't get the chance to answer last week in regards um, to what I do for fun and one of those things I do for fun is reading books about gender um, and I'm also really into music, but yeah, reading books about gender and some of the books that I've read recently are on that very topic. So I thought I'd share them with you today and um, talk a bit about uh, the books and, and the authors. So the first um, one is by somebody who I guess you've all heard of, uh, pretty important in the field of um, gender and sort of trans issues and has written quite a few books now and they're pretty influential and that's Kate Bornstein. So the first one I read of Kate's was my gender workbook. And this one set out like a workbook, so lots of questionnaires and activities uh, and things, and it's really confronting and really quite full on and really challenges your perceptions of gender. Um, I don't know, it's an eye-opening kind of, yeah, mind-blowing book. So this one, I was, yeah, really happy. I think I read it about a year and a half ago now, and I really want to read it again. I didn't actually finish it or get through all the activities, but it's just one of those really good influential books. Um, also this one by Kate, uh, which I believe was their first book, so that's Gender Outlaw. Um, it's kind of more of a, a personal experience. I think it, um, I don't know, it's a, to me it's a really important uh, text in regards to gender related issues and genderqueer. Not that um, genderqueer as an identity or, um, or as a term was really, I guess, around when this book was written, but um, certainly what Kate talks about is very, um, yeah, very much genderqueer, and yeah, if you get the chance to read this book, also do it. Um, more recently, Kate has released this book, Gender Outlaws, um, the sequel to Gender Outlaw, obviously, but it's not completely written by Kate. It's actually a, um, what's the word for it? A lots of different writers have come together and written um, their own stories and. Um, Kate and another author who's also one of my favourite authors, uh, who's the other person I'm going to talk about, Esper Bergman, have compiled that and edited it and yeah, it's really good. Again, really confronting, really challenges what you think about and what you feel about gender and um, yeah, so cool to get like so many different perspectives. There's a story in here that everyone can relate to and some that you probably can't relate to. Um, there's some pretty extreme stuff in there but it's a really good book and a, and a worthy read. Um, yeah, so Kate's fantastic, and um, Esper Bergman is the other author that I'm really into, so as well as um, editing that book, uh, I've read this one, oops, sorry, Butch is a Noun, so I think that might have been Esper's first uh, book. My favourite one of Esper's, though, and the first one I read was Cold, um, The Nearest Eggs Are Maybe Behind You, which I think was a book that came after this one. And I get the feeling in that book, Esper was really identifying more as genderqueer. And so more relatable for a sort of genderqueer uh, perspective. Whereas here, um, obviously, Butch is a noun. It's sort of coming from a different place, but really interested, uh, really interesting to sort of see how that, that evolves and getting the different perspectives from the same author. So yeah, Kate Bornstein, Esper Bergman, um, definitely my favourite gender-related authors. And I've learned a lot from them. And really the kind of books that I pick up over and over again and just read you know, read a chapter of, especially books like Butch is a Noun or um, Gender Outlaws or um, The Nearest Exit Maybe Behind You, Behind You, yeah, <laughs> Nearest Exit Maybe Behind You, because they're the kind of books where each chapter is a separate sort of story, separate sort of issue, so they, they're good to pick up and read, kind of, I don't know, I find them inspirational like that. Um, in regards to other gender-related people that I like uh, in the realm of music, my favourite musician is Lucas Silvera. Um, Lucas is from the Clicks, and Lucas is a trans man. And I got into the Clicks a couple of years ago, and I think they've got like three albums. And um, they come from Canada, and they're sort of rocky punk, maybe. I don't know how you class them, but they're awesome. Um, I like a lot of Canadian bands, 
and I like a lot of Canadian queer bands, so bands that um, sort of, you know, have sort of queer element, whether they're um, lesbians or whatever, but yeah, that's how I got into the Clicks, and the Clicks is awesome, and the interesting thing about um, the Clicks and about Lucas, who now has his own solo album, and had he um, does a lot of covers of different people's music on YouTube as well, which I really get into, so that's on the Clicks music channel, so I'll put a link down the bottom for that as well, you can go check out Lucas's stuff as well as the Clicks. And yeah, covers some pretty awesome songs. And he recently did his own solo album, so Lucas is just awesome. And I guess from a gender perspective, it's really inspiring for Lucas because he openly identifies as transgender and talks about that a lot in the media, um, which is, uh, you know, I, I guess that would be a tempting thing for some people to promote their own music or be different so that, you know, people pay attention. And I guess musicians or artists or... Um, authors could probably sell themselves on that sort of fact alone, but Lucas seems really genuine and, you know, he's really honest about um, his identity and open about it and, you know, he's just an awesome musician. So regardless of any kind of gender thing, you know, just an awesome musician. So I really, um, yeah, I think Lucas is great. And really cool as well because uh, during the clicks was before uh, he started on T. So obviously, as you would know from... Uh, either your experience with the tea or watching people's experiences uh, with tea on, on YouTube, uh, it has the uh, tendency to change your voice. So it's been interesting to see Lucas's progression in voice from the clicks um, to where he's at now with his solo stuff. And if you ever get the chance to see him live or go download his album from uh, uh, iTunes and yeah, it's just awesome. So yeah, Lucas Silvera from the clicks is definitely my musical inspiration as far as um, uh, genderqueer trans uh, people go. Yeah, cool. Anyway, that's probably all um, I have to cover. I'm very sorry again that I didn't post last week, but I promise it will never happen again. And yeah, I'll see you all next week. Bye. So what's in the fridge? In my fridge this evening is Vegemite, because all Australians eat Vegemite. Uh, soup. Oversized novelty tomato holder. What's in that? Probably a rotten tomato. <laughs> Why would I keep that? <laughs>